Okay. Can you hear me? Okay, I think I, you can. Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you, everybody, for staying so long for the last talk of the summit. So I really appreciate it. I expected that I will know everybody by face, and I I don't. So that's that's good. Uh, my name is Jakub Libosvar. I work at Red Hat um, on OVN and Neutron. I've been involved in Neutron for a while. And today I want to present you a migration from ML to OVS to ML to OVN. When I'm talking about ML to OVS, uh, I'll say that a lot throughout the presentation. Uh, just to make it clear, this means Neutron ML2 plugin with uh, Open vSwitch mechanism driver. And when I mention ML2 OVN, that it means uh, the same, but instead of the Open vSwitch mechanism driver, there is, there is OVN mechanism driver. So a little bit of a recap, what, what is ML2 OVS? Just out of curiosity, uh, who recognizes this diagram? Who's familiar with the architecture of ML2 OVS? Hands up. OK, that's good. Thank you. And who's familiar with similar architecture with OVN? OK, perfect. Thank you. So just a recap for those who didn't raise their hand up. Uh, ML2 OVS is distributed. It uses RPC for communicating uh, the brain. The source of truth is Neutron Server on the right-hand side. And uh, you can have multiple agents in, the, in, your, in your environment. And a Neutron OVS agent, that, that usually takes care of the L2 layer. Uh, Neutron L3 agent that can be on a different node or actually it is on the same node with OVS because you need L2, uh, but it can be on a different node than the HTTP agent, it can be a different node than metadata node uh, and metadata agent. And all of these nodes, they, they really scale, uh, scale out. So you can have multiple of these nodes and they can be uh, all along your cluster. And uh, there are these kind of services in ML2 OVS that are responsible for those particular things like L3, um, connectivity and L2 connectivity, metadata, and DHCP. That's why it's so, so much distributed. Typically, you have a lot of compute nodes in that environment. So what's the difference between ML2 OVS and OVN? Probably this. So OVN is simpler. Everything is implemented in OVN controller, those, those, uh, those capabilities that were in, in Neutron L3 agent and, and OVS agent and all, all of those kind of things. So you can cross that out of your, of your architecture. Uh, what is new in this architecture is the OVN central on the right-hand side on the, on the top corner. Uh, you can see there, is, there are some databases. So this is a second database that is in Neutron. Neutron has its own Neutron database that is still source of truth. And it populates the OVN database with the data. And OVN then serves as, as the SDM backend. So if we take that into account, this is very important when you, are, when you plan to migrate, is to think about where you want to place your services, because it doesn't map one to one, as you can see on this slide. How, how the OVN will look like after, after the migration is done, or if you do a greenfield, then, then it probably looks something like, like this. So you have simplified architecture. You have the controller node where Neutron server is. This stays the same. You have the compute nodes. It just has OVN controller and Neutron OVN metadata agent. Uh, you have the databases that, that are new. This is the OVN central. And instead of L3 node, you have the gateway node. So this is the difference. Now, what do you need to do when you, when you plan to migrate, when you want to switch from OVS to OVN? So first of all, this is, this is based on Triple O, and uh, it uses Triple O to deploy the OVN services. It's important and very important, and I want to highlight it again, it's very important to have those configuration files for Triple O correct. Then other things that you need to consider are, is architecture. So you need, to, you need to think about your workloads, how you want to place them and, and think about what will be the load on those particular nodes and how, how many you want them. Um, the difference between OVS and OVN is that it also uses a different tunneling technology. It uses Geneve tunneling as opposed to the VXLAN that is used in ML2 OVS. 
and Geneve has a header that's eight bytes larger than VXLAN, which technically means that your MTU is lower on, on the guests, on the instance instances, and on the ports. So when you are switching from VXLAN to Geneve, then you need to consider MTU, that it needs to be either lowered or you need to accommodate, and that's the better approach, you need to accommodate your, your fabric. So if you are not at the top of the limit of your, of your physical fabric, then, it, then it's better to uh, just increase your fabric and, and you don't need to care about MTU in, in OpenStack at all. Uh, another thing is in OVN, everything is distributed by default. You have distributed routing by, by default. And uh, if you want to migrate from, from your OVS that doesn't have distributed routing, you can migrate to, to OVN. You just need to set things up correctly, like bridge mappings, because now your compute nodes will need to have ex uh, access to the external network. Another difference is that metadata agent in OBS is placed on one node, so typically you have multiple metadata agent workers, like 12, 20, so they can serve all, all the requests coming in. Uh, with OVN, all, each metadata agent is placed on the compute node and serves the metadata locally. So when you're setting your metadata agent workers, typically with OVN, you just set it to one as opposed to OVS where, where, where you have multiple. And then you also need to check your parity gaps because we are catching up with, with OVS in, in terms of features. And uh, OVN doesn't support yet everything that, that OVN does. Uh, so now I want to talk a little bit, little bit about what the migration actually is for your your cloud. So I'm thinking about when, when I was a kid and, and I had a Lego and I, and I played with it, it usually came with, with some sort of manual that, that told me how to deploy, how to build up the Lego. So I'm thinking about the manual is actually something like, like a triplo. That's, that's what builds you the, the whole thing. Based on that, oh, I'm sorry. Based on that, who can guess what is this? Hands up. So this is, this is how I imagine OpenStack. And each brick is a service or, or some sort of layer. So if I, if I look at some of the bricks, I can tell that the red brick could be ML2 plugin, the yellow brick could be Neutron API, and the uh, white, green, and, and blue will be mechanism drivers. So if we go back to the, uh, to the original picture, then we can tell this is Neutron. This is Neutron API and ML2 plugin and OVS and SRIOV. So we'll focus only on these bricks, only on Neutron. And where you're migrating your environment, the only thing that you can change in the process is the green brick. That's the OVS. You don't or you cannot change any other service. The service needs to be configured the same as it was with ML2 OVS. So the final picture will look like this. You just take out the green brick and you put in the, uh, the blue brick with a happy giraffe that's on OVN. And I skipped some slides, so I'm going back. Uh, so the procedure of the migration uh, is that you have some inputs into the procedure. The one of the inputs is actually your ML2 OVS production environment, which was deployed with some triple configuration files, heat templates, roles, and such a thing. You can have composable roles in, in, in OpenStack, and everything is very customized. So there is no procedure that, that would just take your, your cloud, and without any configuration, it would put it to, uh, to OVM backend. So it's important to have this configuration for OVS that's on the le le left-hand side. And you take this configuration, and you just modify the configuration to have the OVN bits. And this is very tricky. So it's, it's a good approach to try it out on a stage deployment and validate that your triple O configuration files are correct. And this is how you want your cloud to look like. So when you take that green paper, which is your, your configuration for triple O, and, and you deploy it on ML2 OVN, then you want to validate that this is what you want. You can iterate in case you don't like it. And then you need to take this, these files for, for triple O, and you can 
put it along with your production environment to the migration procedure. And then boom, migration happens, and you have ML2 LVM production deployment. But again, it's very important to have those configuration files correct and, and how we, you want to, uh, your cloud to look like. It must, it must be uh, aligned with that. Unless, uh, if you don't do that, and if there is a mistake or if something is misconfigured, then, then the migration could fail, and, and that's a big problem. OK, now let's talk a little bit about the software itself, what, what the migration actually is. The migration is just a bash script that wraps around Ansible. The Ansible roles and playbooks, this is the, the body of the migration. So each, each step in the migration is, is, is composed by, by a role. And each uh, command that you issue to the OVN migration, a uh, bash script, actually calls a playbook. So you have different procedures that, or steps in the, in the, in, during the migration that you can issue using this tool. And, and it will help you move to, to OVN. The playbook itself, the Ansible playbook, then runs. It does some stuff that I'm going to talk about later. And uh, it will, at some point, call triple O to deploy. It will be really like triple O deploy command. Just out of curiosity, who is familiar with triple O? I talk about triple O a lot, but. <laughs> OK, so maybe I should tell what's triple O. Triple O is basically upstream community project that's used to deploy OpenStack. And in, at, at Red Hat, it's, uh, it's productized to something called uh, Director. And um, I'm happy that only a few people raised their hand up uh, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very complex and, and very complicated. So during this procedure, during this Ansible, there is another call to the triple O deploy. And this triple O deploy calls Ansible again. So th this is very, very lots of layers inside of the migration procedure. And, and that's, uh, that's, that's very complex procedure at, at the end. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about the steps themselves. You can, you can divide them to, to three groups. One is pre-migration. This is something that you can do a lot in advance when you, when you migrate to the cloud. Uh, what it does is that you need to get some Ansible inventory for, for those playbooks. It uses the in inventory that's capable of being generated by the triple O. So it's, it's, it's really simple. It, then it just aligns. When I talked about the MTU, when you don't have the opportunity to, uh, to increase your MTU size on your fabric and you want to have your tunneling on, on Geneve, then there are some tools, some steps that will help you to decrease the MTU for, for the instances. So how it works is that it actually configures the T1 parameter for the HCP agent. T1 in DHCP means how, how often you should ask for the renewal when you, when you get a DHCP lease in your, in your guest. And this is configurable by, if you know, if you know the HCP agent, it uses the NS mask. So actually, what it does is that it configures the DHCP agent to uh, some value, uh, 30 seconds. And the HCP agent then configures the DNS mask uh, processes to uh, tell the VMs when they get the DHCP pack to ask for a new pack every 30 seconds. So that way, you can get uh, minimize the, the disruption when, when your VMs on, on east-west traffic, when they, when they talk to each other, they need to have the same MTU. So you minimize that to some like reasonable downtime or amount of time that, that where it will be communicating with, with different MTUs. So once they're done, you actually need to wait until the, the, the guests pick the new value from the HCP agent. And then you can go ahead and you can reduce the MTU on your network in, in Neutron. That all can be done as, as a pre-migration step. Then it prepares the OVN images. So it can deploy the services everywhere. And optionally, it can do some pre-migration resources. Then it can validate 
automatically if the migration was successful and everything, everything uh, works. Uh, probably in production, you, you already have your own workloads, so you don't want to throw more and, and test them. So we can test them later on with your own workloads. Then the next step would be the migration itself, which is a quick backup. It stops the ML2 OVS resources, like agents, so the control plane goes down. The data plane still stays, so uh, there are things like external processes, like uh, DNS mask and keep alive for, for L3HA. This still stays. So that's, that's up and running, your, your VMs can talk. Then it calls the triple O just to configure the OVN. So it deploys the OVN services, and it uh, switches Neutron to use the OVN mechanism driver. Uh, but the, that means Neutron is already on OVN, but the data plane is still on OVS. OVS uses the BR int, and, and the OVN will use some different bridge, some fake bridge, just to not mess up with the data plane. And then it switches the bridge, so, so OVN uh, will start using the BRN. And then that's basically it. You're, you're on OVN now. And then some post-migration cleanups that it deletes the, the sidecar things and external processes that are used by ML2 OVS, and it can validate the, uh, some, some other resources. So I have prepared uh, a demo, how, how it actually looks like when you're migrating. Uh, it's in on website, but I have it here. I'm connected to a uh, lab at Red Hat. And it's, I know it's small. I realized that too late. Uh, can you read that? It's not perfect, I know. I apologize for that. So let's. Yeah, I cannot do that because later it uses uh, Tmux and it's pre recorded. So if I would increase the, the font, well, thank you for, it's a good, good point. Uh, if I increase, then, then it uh, messes up with, with the layout of, of Tmux. So first of all, um, I'm gonna show the VXLAN network. The important thing is, that you can notice, is that the MTU is set for 1450. If, if you cannot read it, it is 1450. Then I have just a single server running in this small environment. It's on that, uh, on that VXLAN network, and it has a floating IP. This is ML2 OVS with DVR. You can see the agents are running everywhere from ML2 OVS, and we can talk to the, to the VM. So the first thing you need to do is to install some, some bits that will contain those playbooks and that bash script that I talked about earlier. Then we create some working directory and we copy over those playbooks. Uh, this command is the one that will take your, your uh, triple O configuration files from your stage. So let's, let's say the stage is actually somewhere I have validated my my triple O configuration files, and I'm just taking them back to, to my uh, production OVS environment. So I'll just copy to something that's like an entry point. The, the only thing that is needed to be done compared to the Greenfield OVN deployment is that you need to add some extra file here that will be used later by the migration procedure to override some triple O values. So it needs to be at the end of, of those parameters that you're passing to triple O deploy. And we generate the inventory. So this is how the inventory looks like. It's pretty simple. Uh, it just contains the OVN DBs. It's based on how your cloud look like. So the OVN DBs are currently will be placed on, on controller zero. The OVN controllers will be everywhere where OVS agent was. And uh, it detected where the DHCP agent is. In our, in our case, it's on control zero, but if it's somewhere else, then, then, then it's going to detect that as well. OK, there's a little mistake. So now I'm going to connect to the instance, and I'm going to connect to the compute node hosting that instance. And we're going to sniff for the DHCP traffic and we'll be observing how the MTU changes on the 
uh, inside of the guest. So this is the tab VM of the instance on the left-hand side on the node. And on the right-hand side, uh, there is the, the VM itself. So now we're going to change the DHCP agent uh, configurations. As I mentioned before, so, so it sets the, oh, this is ugly. So it sets the uh, T1 parameter for the agent. And, and then it's going gonna, it's gonna to fire up the, uh, the reduce MTU, which will reduce the MTU on the network itself. So now, now we, we were in that stage where we needed to wait 24 hours for the, the guest to pick the new values. But that, that's why there are so many mistakes. I, I went ahead and I restarted the, the networking in, inside of the guest. So it starts picking the new DHCP uh, offers again. And it, it didn't go well, so I needed to reboot it. Um, but then it, it went up. It still, it, it's not shown in there, but it still has the old MTU. But the uh, DHCP agent, this is the reduce MTU value, is now configured to provide the new MTU value, which will be seen here. So here you can see, this is the same network, VXLAN pre-migration. But before that, when, when this command was shown at the beginning, uh, there was 1450. Now, now it's 1442, so it's eight bytes less. And here on the, on the left-hand uh, bottom corner, if it shows, it doesn't. Uh, oh, I don't know what happened. Uh, it, it will show that the DHCP agent offers the new MTU 1442. And uh, on, the, on the bottom side, you can see that the ETH0 on the guest, this is this, is this line, the ETH0 interface within the guest picked the new value, so now, now it's on 1442. The next step would be to create the OVN images. So this is a container prepare file. The only thing that you need to change here is to change the neutron driver from OVS to OVN. So it will, it will deploy the OVN images. And, and you call uh, OpenStack container image prepare. So it will prepare the images. Here is uh, OpenStack triple O container image list. Grab OVN, so it will make sure, or, or in this demo, it, I make sure that the uh, OVN images are already there on, on the under code and are ready to be used by, by Triple O. And now we are about to start the migration. So I put some monitoring here. Uh, on the right hand side, top corner, we are on the controller and we'll be observing how the Podman container, containers will be switched uh, during the migration. On the, on the bottom side, we will look at the OpenFlow rules in BRint. So in, with, with OVN, actually, everything is implemented with OpenFlow. So when you have a compute node and you look at the BRint OpenFlows, then you see many as, as compared to, to ML to OVS. So what's expected here is that there is some number, 39, which represents the amount of OpenFlows currently on the BRint with ML to OVS. And uh, we'll, we can expect that with ML2 OVN, it, it's going to be much higher. And on the left-hand bottom side, we will observe the same services as, as we did on, on the controller, but it will be just on, on the compute node. So here, I, I know it wasn't observable because now, now it's, it's kind of broken the layout, uh, but I issued the OVN migration start migration, which is the big process that's going to consume the, the triple O roles, and it's going to run across the cloud. So it's going to stop some services uh, that were from, from ML2 OVS. You can see now the, the services are disappearing. I will, I will pause it quickly here. So on the, on the right hand side here, on the controller, you can see Neutron API is running. And there are some Neutron HA proxy, Q router, and Q DHCP uh, sidecar containers running, but there is no uh, Neutron DHCP agent. So the agent is now is now down. The control plane is now down. Uh, 
Okay, I don't know why it's so broken. I tested it before the talk and it was fine, I think. <laughs> so I apologize that it's so messy. Uh, but now, now it's running, it's, it's very, like the speed is, is much higher than, than in, uh, in, in normal, uh, normal life. So this is, this is a lot faster. It usually takes a lot of time. But since we have limited time, then, then it's, it's fastened. And now we're, we're in a situation where the triple O is doing its stuff. So now it's, it's going to deploy the whole cloud. But unfortunately, what it does is that it tries to deploy all the services, not just Neutron. So that's something that, that can be improved. And uh, we just need the Neutron bits. But it's going to check all the services that are there in your, in your cloud. Now we have to wait until something interesting pops up. Something interesting popped up. So we have here OVNDB's bundle, which is the DB of, of OVN. So now we have OVNDB there, but it's not used yet. It's empty. And it first deploys all the services, and then it starts populating the data and, and and it will do the, the switch later. So now the time's flying. There, there is the new Neutron DB sync container that will be used later for, for a sync of, of the databases. And now it started to deploy also things on the compute node. So you can see here, there is OVN controller right here. There is O, there is VN controller. So OVN controller is now running on, on compute nodes. Uh, OVN metadata agent is running there, but still it's, it's not used yet. Now we have to wait a bit until it deploys all the services and the migration continues. There we go. So now the OVN is deployed and uh, we're about to start the OVN. So what happens now, the sync neutron DB with OVN right here, that will look at the OVN database and uh, and in the neutron database, it will see that the OVN database is empty. So it will start creating the same resources that are in, in neutron, the same objects that are corresponding in, in OVN. It will start populating them in, in OVN. And now some, some cleanups and, and the switch. I, I don't see the flows here, but there, here, there we go. Now there is 536. So that means currently on, on BRINT, there are 536 open flow rules. Before that, it was 30 something. So it was much, much lower. Now the data plane was switched to, to OVN. And uh, the sidecar containers and the, and the external resources that, that are there from, from the OBS agents were, were stopped and cleaned. And now it's deleting the, the agents. So as you can see here, the neutron open vSwitch, for example, is down. It's, it's not alive, but we have OVN controller that's happy and alive, and, and it's already serving uh, the data plane. So we wait a little bit for, to clean up the things, and now you can see, oh, it's gone, uh, that there are only uh, OVN services. So we try to ping our VM, it works. We try to connect there, check it, and, and, and it, was, it was up and running. We were able to SSH to that VM using OVN. And that's it. That's the demo. And that's the end of my presentation. So thank you again for staying that late. Uh, are there any questions? We have 20 seconds for questions.
Yeah, question? Okay, perfect. Hello. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I was wondering from the point of view of a Cola user, if there are things in your roles that could be extracted and reused by other deployment systems. So I saw at the end you had a, like something generating a script to do a cleanup. Is that something that uh, you mean the roles for the migration the, itself? The roles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, actually, I can I can show it to you on on GitHub. So if you go to GitHub to OpenStack Neutron, uh, there is tools directory OBM migration. Uh, so it lives in Neutron already. Okay. That's yeah, yeah. It's it's okay, already part of the Neutron tree. And if you go to Triplo Environment Playbooks Roles, then there are a bunch of the roles that were that were used, and and yeah, they. They can be reused. There are just some configuration uh, parameters that, like for example, uh, like if you if you go to template and activate OVN, then you can see there there are some Jinja parameters like OVN bridge. So this is, or maybe it is by default. It could be here in the role, but I think since it's not used for for or not intended to be used for general purpose, uh, it it could be missing here. Well, it is here, so. So good, <laughs> okay. but yeah, yeah, it could be used by by other other okay. projects. Okay, and um, is there downtime when you switch from one to the other? I, I didn't really see in the demo. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I apologize for the demo. This is not how I planned it. Uh, there is a little bit downtime. It really depends on your scale, on the scale of of your cloud. So when there are multiple machines, it tries to do the switch as fast as possible. So what it actually does is that OVN controller has a. a configuration option to pick the bridge. And it's set during the migration, it's set to be our int. And the activation basically means it goes and changes this configuration on each node where OVN controller is running to the BR int, the one that really has the workloads. And it restarts the OVN controller. So the OVN controller uh, will need to fetch the logical flows and implement the open flows. So that's where the downtime is. On, in our environment, in, in our tests, it, it is around one, two seconds. Okay, thanks. But we, we don't test it really at, at scale. Uh, and can you, do, can you do each hypervisor sequentially, or do you have to do the whole cloud at the same time? It really depends on how you uh, configure here in the, this, this is the file that's generated by the generate inventory, the, the very first command that, that was there in the demo. And I think there is uh, the, Setting for, oh, actually not. It's it's in Ansible config. Uh, here is the forks. So that that's basically a, an Ansible setting that tells how many parallel connections there will be coming to the nodes from from Ansible. Uh, so if you want to do it one by one, if you don't mind that, basically some VMs will be on OVN, some VMs will be on on OVS uh, during the time because OVS will use VXLAN, so your your provider networks will work just fine but uh, the tunneling will be different. So you can really, with changing these forks to one, you can do one by one. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. And maybe one fun question for the end. Yeah, In sure. In your Lego uh, Duplo diagram, there was a toilet, so which service is that? <laughs> That's a good question, actually, and I, and I think you can think about it as some really important service, because like toilet is important, everybody uses it. So that, that was not supposed to be uh, like shaming, but it's, it's more like showing that, that this is really important service. So it can be any service that you consider important. <laughs> okay, sure. I still have one question. I saw it all the time when you, when you switch to OVN that the OVN agent controls afterwards the OVS switch. Uh, can, can you get a little bit closer to the microphone? Closer to the microphone. I saw the OVS, the OVN agent, you know, being controlled by the OVN controller, programs the OVS switch, and the OVS switch does the real work. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so the OVS switch goes down and comes up again, controlled by the OVN agent. And the OVN agent is called OVN controller. So, yeah. how it works is that. It's it's like a binary that's that's, that's running there on on compute node, and it fetches some. It's called logical flows from the southbound database. The yep. one that I can show on the 
here. So yeah. here is the southbound database. This, this is basically yeah. where the OVN controller connects to. Yeah. And it will get some logical representation of how the uh, network looks like. And it will translate it to the open flows that are implemented in the OVS bridge. OK. If, if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was my understanding. OK, thank yeah. you very much. OK, thank you for your question. Any other questions? Okay, then thank you again and have safe travels home. <laughs>